we are talking about uh, a successful SaaS security program and with so many risks for CISOs and security teams uh, that begging for attention, um, why should a SaaS security program be uh, a high priority for them? I think it's absolutely become a, a high priority out of necessity. We've had more than 50 major SaaS breaches in the past two years. 80% of business applications are now software as a service. Uh, SaaS has become the OS of business and we see attackers going after SaaS as an objective and able to get into information within the organization. You think about your SaaS applications, they house your payroll data, your HR data, all of the information on your customers, your IT assets, sure. And now even our security tools are SaaS. So that has now, the tools that we use to secure our enterprise are now part of that SaaS attack surface. Well, and Rare is the organization that uses just a single SaaS service, right? Absolutely. Uh, about 40% of global SaaS spend is for vendors. Microsoft, Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Workday. And that's the upper end of the market. But GitHub is in every organization. We see applications like DocuSign. You have uh, vertical applications like Viva for their healthcare and life sciences. There's whole industries where the major tools in the platform of that industry is a SaaS application. So it's common for uh, an organization to have dozens, if not more than 100, SaaS applications across their business. Okay, Let, let's drop down a level. Let's talk to us about some of the key components of a really good SaaS security program. You know, SaaS applications are different, but the thing that they all have in common is there's a few things you need to watch out for. First and foremost, configuration. What is the configuration? Then there's monitoring and threat activity. You know, SaaS is such a huge part of the enterprise, and we find that most organizations are not monitoring, getting logs, or getting threat intel feeds on those SaaS applications. Then there's the whole B2B connected app, third-party ecosystem. Mm. You think about a tool like GitHub, how many bots and workers and integrations do we have that only exist to plug into that code pipeline? Or tools like Teams and Slack and all of the integrations that we have there. So our SaaS attack surface is not just the major applications that we use, it's all these third-party connections that go into them. And then lastly, there's you know, compliance and data exposure. Who am I sharing my data with? Am I sharing it with them intentionally? Am I complying with industry regulations and standards? We often find that customers are inadvertently not complying with their industry regulations and standards because they don't know, they don't have visibility into how things are configured and who has access to their data. Um, rank rank the, the, the weakest links in the, in the chain, if you would. Uh, there's there's the, the user security, of course. There's the, the, the connection. Uh, Presumably, the, the software could also be compromised. Uh, what does what is, what is the, the, the threat landscape look like from, from that slice? We find the configuration piece leads to major data leaks. Half the time we walk into a customer, we find some of their most sensitive data leaking onto the internet on day one. Okay, um, you're, you're hinting at it here, but I'm, I'm curious what some of the most common and concerning risks you see in, in SaaS security. It, does, does it build on what you just described? Like we saw with the solar winds breach, attackers are very clever. They're going after the maintenance keys. They're going after the infrastructure. These API connections that humans don't generally use, but have access and are connected to everything. And those tools today are SaaS. And so that's what the attackers are targeting. And because it's not interactive, or the security team may not even know that that connection exists, or that API key or OAuth token was handed out to a third party, they're getting breached and you don't even know that you have compromised credentials in your environment today. It strikes me that, uh, going back to your comment about the multiple SaaS applications that, <coughs> excuse me, that an organization may have in play, um, hygiene for HR may not look the same as, say, the, the best practices for, for finance. So companies which, which tend to like to have a cookie cutter sort of template approach to, to security best practices and hygiene this may not really work so well where SAS is concerned. I use the language analogy. You know, it's not that you don't speak, it's you don't speak 50 languages. And you don't have time to go become fluent in 50 different languages. You need a translator. And so that's where, you know, App Omni comes in and that we can be that universal translator for SAS because security teams tend to know what they need to do. They know what controls they want to have in place. What they don't know is how has the business configured it and what does the correct way look like for that given SAS application. Um, looking ahead, what, what sort of challenges do you see for the CISO out on the horizon? Well, we're, we have CISOs that are being asked to do more with less. The attack surface is only growing. Remote work and the explosion of cloud is definitely part of that. And then I think we're seeing a regulatory landscape that you now need to comply with regulations across many different geographies and you figure out 
How does that impact my business operations? What systems are even in scope? So I feel that CISOs are being asked to do more with less, with less resources and a much more difficult landscape. That all leads to automation. And I think that you know, security orchestration, automation, and now with AI, we're, we have technologies that are enabling that allow us to do much more with less because truly I have not met a CISO that feels like they have all the resources they need. No, of they have the team size they need, that they have everything under control. It's almost a constant game of triage of what are my most burning problems and how do I go address those today. What are you hearing from CISOs with regard to AI, specifically generative AI, which, which threatens to really upend the, the entire security industry? Because you're right, AI, generative AI, it can impersonate humans very, very well. And there's some you know, poor authentication practices that are based on human interaction that now AI can script and impersonate a human fairly effectively. So you can't just rely on authentication anymore. You need to look at what people are doing.